Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Pedro Gomez from Drew Estate Cigars and today we're talking about how Cuba lives in the DNA of cigars. That's right. You're watching Cigars <laughs> Daily. <laughs> Hey, get more out of this video when you watch it on CigarsDailyPlus.com. Have you heard of Cigars Daily Man, Plus? everybody in the cigar industry knows See, about Cigars Daily. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you guys can get more out of this video. and You'll find coupon codes and extra content and more. And for this video, we're jamming on the Hoya de Nicaragua Antaño. Yes. A traditional Nicaraguan cigar that carries a peculiar piece of... Cuban DNA with it and that's what we want to cover today and we, I want to dive right in with Absolutely. you because you're just such a wealth of knowledge Pedro this is the big thing in cigars it's Cuba 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 everybody's always talking about Cuba <laughs> and the truth is we know that today that like so many cigars in America in fact half yes. come from Nicaragua comes from Nicaragua that's but, right but there's so much of the Cuban cigar culture born into what we do in Nicaragua mm -hmm. today that's what I wanted to ask you about yes. and you're a specialist with this because you also run with Hoya de Nicaragua. Right. And this is like a traditional Nicaraguan brand that gets its roots from Cuba. So that's right. So kick me kick it off here. How the hell is Hoya de Nicaragua tied in with Cuba? Well, first and first thing, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be You're in welcome, your brother. amazing You're show. And everybody that is watching right now, you guys are gonna learn a pin or two, or maybe three. That's right. But don't miss the first one. But uh come back to this Hoya de Nicaragua where when it comes to Drew Estate, uh, we are the exclusive distiller of Hoya de Nicaragua in the United States. Hoya de Nicaragua is the oldest cigar factory in Nicaragua. You said the exclusive distributor. That means that you guys run for Hoya, but Hoya is its own brand. Hoya de Nicaragua is its own. is an independent cigar company because Hoya de Nicaragua they market or they do the whole marketing and sales in other countries. They are pretty much everywhere outside of the United States. But here in the United States, Drew State does the everything when it comes to the distribution. So come back to this one, night Antonio 1970. This one is a uh, one of the original brands from Hoya de Nicaragua. This cigar is a full body cigar. And come back, and I want to steal a little bit of part of your question when you were talking about Cubans. So I'm going to steal a little bit of your question and talking about Cuba. How Cubans are in the DNA of non-Cuban cigars when it comes to brands that comes from Dominican Republic, brands that comes from Honduras, and brands that comes from my country, which is Nicaragua. So the first Cubans that came to Nicaragua, it was Juan Francisco Bermejo and Simon Camacho. They were the founders of Hoya de Nicaragua. In the year when they found Hoya de Nicaragua, it was in 19, uh, 1968. And from that point on, Hoya de Nicaragua has been in the business for more than two decades. And, and 1968, that's when things in Cuba were starting to get sort of hairy. That's for, right. For cigar makers and everybody out there. So basically, right around that time, team, a lot of people out of Cuba, especially people from the cigar industry and the tobacco industry, were, they were fleeing the country because of the... Fidel Castro and the whole thing, what was going on with Cuba. So a lot of a lot of those people went to Dominican Republic, to Honduras. But the two first Cuban that came, it was these two guys that found Hoya de Nicaragua. So what the original Cubans that came to Nicaragua in the first place, I'm talking about people that, uh, that, that brought with them their knowledge and their experience. And one thing that really helped us out at that time, Nobody knew nothing about Nicaraguan cigars and not even Nicaraguan tobacco. It was like it was like the the West during the gold rush. There's all this gold there, and people are just discovering about it. And the, and Nicaragua is about to get flooded with cigar makers. Flooded with cigar makers. And the thing is this: when it comes to Nicaragua, my country, we have been going up and down, and a lot of pain, suffer, victory, happiness, and the whole nine yards. It have been a cocktail of different emotion that has been happening through the history of my country. So by right around early 70s, that's when people, that's when you start to see cigar companies with Cubans uh, origin that start to, start to pop up in Nicaragua. I'm talking about 
uh, Padron Cigars, yeah, yeah. Oliva Cigars. The original Nicaraguan yes. brands. Now, I, I got a question uh, mm-hmm. for you as you go into this. Now, these guys, if you say they fled Cuba and they bring with them knowledge and experience, which is really rich tradition and heritage in Cuba That's even right. today. But but what else did they bring along with them? I, I mean, I've heard stories of guys mm-hmm. with pockets full of tobacco <laughs> seeds leaving Nicaragua. I mean, what kind of what kind of stuff did they have to get started and what did they need to, to like start from zero well i would say for them the greatest bless that these people have in in the first place it was how rich the soil of nicaragua is Mm. the weather is was just perfect to grow tobacco and eventually to make cigars so for us it was a bless because Nicaragua, especially esteli which is my my hometown esteli city esteli wouldn't be in the map of the people, I'm talking about people all over different, I mean, from all over the world that smoke cigars, they do know that there is a little town in Nicaragua, this is named is Esteli, and that's where all the Nicaragua cigar brands are coming from. This is like the way that Detroit used to be the center of car making mm-hmm. in America, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Nicaragua is not like Detroit because it's booming now. Mm-hmm. Like right now, Nicaragua is it's booming. crushing it with cigars. 58% of all the cigars that comes into to the market comes from Nicaragua. Ah, and to put, to, put it, to put it in this perspective, Tim, back in the days, I would say early 90s, it was Dominicans. Yeah. And then by right around 2008, 2009, people start to hear the word Nicaraguan cigars, Nicaraguan cigars. And nowadays, there is even non-Nicaraguan cigar companies that they market or they do the marketing or the branding yeah using the nicaragua name of course without mention brands so people know up there you know but for us you know as a nicaraguans we are very blessed and, and and it is a beautiful uh uh appreciation that we have in terms of how our tobacco from nicaragua tastes the flavor the strain the richness and also how well received our brands from Nicaraguans are. Yes. I, I, I got to tell you, it was yesterday in my uh, humidor here at the Cigars Daily HQ, a guy came in and, and one of my newer staff members came to me and he said, Tim, I need some help with this guy. Mm-hmm. He's asking for just Nicaraguan puros in a six by 60. It was the only thing that would satisfy Amazing. him is any, and like to him, it was like, <laughs> Any Nicaraguan puro in a six by sixty, not a six by fifty four, right. not like a, a Honduran wrapper. It had to be just that mm-hmm. vitola. But but there was a specific thing in his mind that as long as all the leaf was Nicaraguan, the cigar would be good, bar none, no matter what. Wow. But I'm curious about this because it's born. I mean, all this being born from Cuba, mm-hmm. like what part of Cuba still lives in the DNA of making cigars now with Hoya, with Drew Estate? Because you know that that that's lived on in the Absolutely. tradition. So basically, you know, when it comes to premium cigar stem is a very traditional industry mm. that means you're gonna see cigars that have different names the whole nine yards but when it comes to manufacturing those handmade products the everything will kind of vary just a little bit from one tobacco farm to the next one from one cigar factory to the next one at the end of the day everybody's trying to reach the same ultimate goal, which is making the best cigar that that factory can humanly possibly make. In a sense of Cuba and Drew Estate, I work for Drew Estate, have been at Drew Estate for the last 18 years. And there is one brand that we want to bring in our portfolio, and that happens in 2012. And that was when we launched Herrera Esteli Habano. From the Herrera Esteli Habano, the idea was to bring my man, Willie Herrera, who is our master blender. But when Willie came to Drew Estate, it was to develop a blend that will have a very nice Cubanized flavor profile. And that's how Herrera Esteli Habano was born, by Willie putting together yeah. Herrera, uh, Habano that comes from, that we import 
from Ecuador, a wow, binder that yes. we import from Honduras, and fillers that comes from Nicaragua. So this and cigar is a medium body of smoke. To be clear, and you guys, you guys will find that all over the place. The Herrera Esteli is incredibly popular, and I know Willie has incredible respect and knowledge about Cuban mm -hmm. tradition. But there's some parts of his, you know, blending and and the construction of the cigar that go back to Cuban, Cuban tradition. Yes. Can can you what can you tell oh, us? Absolutely. About that? When it comes to Willie Herrera background, well, really Herrera. He works before Drew Estate at Titan del Bronze, which is a very nice, beautiful boutique cigar factory in Calle Ocho or 8th Street in Miami in a little neighborhood that is called Little Havana. But if I want to roll my R's, Pequeña Habana. That's in Miami. So, <laughs> Willie, he, in, over there in that particular factory, they make cigars in a Cuban way. That means that one person bunch enrolls the cigar and willing having the expertise and that experience because it's a family owned business and those families are Cuban, are Cuban, Cubans. Yeah, yeah. And so for us, you know, when it comes to Cubans, yes, everybody in the whole world knows that when they think about cigars, they think about Cuba, but guess what? There is a new player in the game, which is Nicaragua. And there is big things that are happening in Nicaragua, but come back to where the cigar industry is leading, we cannot forget the roots, yeah. how everything started. And I'm talking about the first Cuban families that immigrate to Nicaragua and they brought with them their experience, their knowledge, and how to grow tobacco, how to cure tobacco, how to ferment tobacco, how to blend cigars, how to make cigars, but obviously nowadays in 2023, there is a lot of great cigar companies, you oh, know? Yeah. And there is a lot of great blends that comes from Nicaragua. And it's beautiful to see that everybody's doing their best. I, t I want to go back to something you said. You said a lot of the cigar factories in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. they they tend to have their own little way of doing things to make right. the best cigar they can. And I've just got very little experience in this. So you can expand on this, but it's everything from like how how the leaves are hung in a curing barn to how long they're there to how they get stacked in a pylone like mm -hmm. that's an incredible that's an incredibly artistic process stacking a pylone Absolutely. to ferment the tobacco and every factory does it a little differently yes. this goes all the way down to when they roll cigars they put the filler in they roll it into mm -hmm. the binder and how long they're pressed in the press and then how long they spend in the aging room like all these little details are different from factory to factory Everything. what are the key components for you you guys with Drew Estate, mm -hmm. and you could even speak to Hoya de Nicaragua right. for like making sure that it's the best cigar. What are the most important parts of the process? So basically everything is start off by having or using the best top raw materials. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the best grapper, the best binder, the best filler. You will never gonna be able to make a great cigar using low quality raw materials. You have to use the best of the best, which in this case talking about the origin of See, of tobaccos that goes into premium cigar, the origins are black tobacco. Yeah. Tobaccos, uh, black tobacco, I'm talking about ma uh, Mata Fina, Bahia Mata Fina from Brazil. Oh, I'm talking San Andres Negro from Mexico. Yes. Habanisa from Cuba. Uh, Sumantra from Indonesia. And from here, from the United States, which is huge. I'm talking about broadleaf broad leaf. tobacco yeah, from buddy. the state of Connecticut. So at the end of the day, you have them. And then everybody, well, every company up there, they blend their cigars differently. Yeah. So what really makes a great cigar, a amazing cigar, is when the cigar has quality, consistency, a great construction, an amazing flavor, a very nice strength, and most importantly, complexity. Because a bory cigar is a bory cigar. Straight up. A very interesting smoke is a cigar that you're gonna be stirring back. While you're I having catch myself blowing out the smoke. That's right. Boom. This brand from Hoya Nicaragua was the official cigar for the White House. Oh, wow. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. That was before <laughs> so for there was us, as much. Skin. In 1970, we're like coming off the gold standard and they're all like, no, nah, light up a Hoya de Nicaragua. Everything will be fine. That's right. But, to, you know, the, we, 
going back to the Cuban part of this, the way that Cuba is tied into this, it's in everything. You mentioned the, the Herrera Esteli Habano, like even the seed for a Habano leaf always originates back to Cuba. And That's maybe right. it's grown over generations of being grown in Nicaragua That's or right. Honduras yes. or Ecuador. But like Cuba lives in that. Even within years after the Cuban embargo was signed, you find... Uh, Nick or Cuban seed being taken in Nicaragua. It's begun to be grown there by Hoya de that's Nicaragua, right. and that's how it still lives in cigars today. Then you've got brilliant blenders like like Willie Herrera right. blending the Herrera Esteli. So if you're looking for something with that Cuban esque flavor, mm -hmm. Herrera Esteli Habano would be a cigar that would give you that. It's such a rich part of who we are, and I oh, think yeah. what you pointed out is probably the best thing. Like what Cuban cigar makers learned through through a lot of pain through a lot of joy, and then even again going to Nicaragua, is that quality and consistency makes a good cigar that stands the test of time. It stands up right. against oppression. It stands up against everything and always creates everything. an amazing experience. And everything starts in just by a little tiny tobacco seed. Basically, in one single spoon, you can have thousands of those different tobacco seeds, and, and that gives us a very nice advantage. Okay. In terms of other uh, other brands that comes from Cuba, because one thing that the struggle that Cuba has been getting in the last man, I would say maybe 40, 40 years has been consistent. A long time. Yeah. And and you hear this and that was going to be my question. You know, Cuban cigars are all the rage and some people say it's just because you can't get them. Other people swear by the things. But clearly Nicaraguan cigars have got something. In, in your mind, you say that the uh, the fertilizer you're able to get yeah. enriches the soil and creates consistency right. that Cuban cigars still sort of strive for. They're That's struggling right. to get it. It's struggling to get it because, you know, the whole, the whole industry in Cuba is controlled by the state, by the yeah. government. Yeah. Which in Nicaragua and Dominican Republic and Honduras is a, it, it, it is a competitive industry. Yeah. That means that everybody's doing their best to put the best cigar up there. And basically the market did state what it stayed and what doesn't go. It's a like great in your case, you know, yeah. how many brands do you import and how many of those brands really stick around in the market? And yeah. how many brands fail? Yeah, more most of the brands fail. And, and you make an amazing point. You know, one of the key differences between Nicaraguan and Cuban cigars is that all Cuban cigars are ultimately government made. That's I right. wonder for people watching at home, if a product said made by the U.S. government on the package, mm -hmm. like how much would that give you more faith in the product itself? Or are you looking for, a, like you said, an industry <sighs> where there's competition it's and competition. everybody has to put their best foot forward to make best. something amazing? The best, man. And the thing is this. I will say for everybody that is watching us right now, if you are smoking, if you are enjoying your cigars, this is the best time to smoke and try a cigar. If you have, if you are not a cigar smoker and you are kind of curious what it is like to smoke a premium cigar, well, there is a lot of great brands up there. So everything, when it comes to being a cigar smoker, everything is about being open-minded yeah. and not just go with the most expensive cigar. Mm. Go after whatever please your palate. Preach it, man. Yes, absolutely. And I, <laughs> I will tell you guys, this is one thing you'll see in the world of cigars, especially if you're just getting into this, the idea of Cuban cigars versus the rest of the world. And really, you don't get to have a total separation. There is an intermingling of tradition, of experience and culture that comes with it. But today, you'll find a huge difference between the two things. And especially if you're looking at Nicaraguan, Ecuadorian, Honduran cigars, you know what? You want to really want to see what it's like? Light up a Cuban if you get a hold of one. But light up a Herrera Esteli That's or right. a Hoya de Nicaragua, right. you'll taste the tradition and heritage of Cuba with like the explosive nature of the Nicaraguan soil and the modern day experience and blending you'll find in guys like Willie Herrera. That's and right. I want to thank you again for hanging out oh, with man. me, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you so this much, so man. Much. Everybody that is watching us, stay tuned because Cigars Daily, they always bring great contact for your knowledge and you're a blessing, man, to a smoke cigars. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> and guys, check this video out on CigarsDailyPlus.com. You'll get even more out of this video. This is Tim and Pedro. We are both signing off for Cigars Daily. We'll see you in the comments. Oh, yeah.